Okay, so we talked about this player a few weeks ago, Matthias Bromir from the SHL, playing out of the Arebro Hockey Club and who just had himself a career year. In our video a few weeks ago, we talked about the reports that indicated NHL interest for this Swedish free agent. Well, today we have some updates on that front. Last time we talked about it, we said that there were three teams that were in the forefront of the Bredomier sweepstakes. It was the Vancouver Canucks, it was the Detroit Red Wings, and it was the Washington Capitals. Well. We have some updates here, and in fact, it looks like the interest has dwindled down to only two teams left. Of course, you know who those teams are, it's in the title, it's in the thumbnail, it was the first thing you saw before clicking on this video. Check out this article here from HockeyNews.se. It's talking about Matthias Bromir, how he's leaving the Oribro Hockey Club after this season, and how he has received several concrete offers from the KHL. But he's actually declined that. It appears that he's actually declined offers in millions of however much the currency is over there in both the SHL and the KHL, that's what the article talks about over here, because he wants to go either to Vancouver or Detroit. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Washington Capitals have been eliminated from the sweepstakes. It's either Vancouver or Detroit who is going to land Matthias Bromier, a left-handed winger who played in the SHL at 25 years of age. Just to get into the whole scouting report aspect of this video, he got 43 points in 52 games last season, which was a career high for him. 17 goals, 26 assists in 52 games played. He was one of the top point producers in the SHL in all three of those categories. His points at 43 was enough for sixth in the league. His assist number all the way over there at 26 was seventh in the league. And in terms of goal scoring, he was seventh in the league as well. So he was a top seven point producer, assist maker, and goal scorer in the SHL last year. And at 25 years of age, he is probably in the prime of his career, I think it's safe to say. So he's going to be in a position where coming over into the NHL, whether it's Detroit or whether it's Vancouver, we will see how capable he is on North American ice if he needs some time in the AHL, which may indeed be the case case, we're not too sure, or if he'll just be able to transition right away and find himself an NHL role. We talked about this in the video a few weeks ago, but Bromier is a guy who does indeed exhibit some strong two-way play, and his goal-scoring ability, in my opinion, it's pretty nice. He's able to wind up, take some nice shots when necessary, and he's fairly capable at creating space for both himself and his teammates. It's why he was one of the better point producers in the league in the SHL last season. Standing at 6 feet and weighing in at 183 pounds, he's got a pretty solid frame, but as some people have pointed out, it would be beneficial for him to work on his center of gravity a little bit more, get a little bit stronger down there in the lower half of his body just so it's easier for him to control the puck and not get shoved off a lot. Let's take a look at Rick Dollywall, because Rick Dollywall from Vancouver Media was talking about Bromia. In fact, he actually spoke with him, according to the tweet over here. The Canucks are a finalist to sign forward Matthias Bromir in Sweden, according to a report by S.J.O. Berg. I just talked with Bromir. Vancouver is in the mix, he says. They have interest. I know Elias Pettersson is doing great. It is a great city. I'm a two-way player who can score and make plays. So, from the Vancouver point of view, it's easy to see why a guy like Bromir would want to come over to Vancouver. Hey, he's Swedish. Vancouver has a Swedish storied history of players with the guys like the Sedins, the Naslins, the Olins, the Gradins. We have all our great Swedish players, even the ones that are on the team nowadays in Alex Edler and then Elias Pettersson and then, you know, Louis Eriksson. He's great. 
So taking a look at this from a Swedish point of view, obviously I don't want to generalize, but seeing a lot of great players from your country playing for this one NHL team, it does seem like an indicator that it would be a nice home for you. As for the Detroit Red Wings, we didn't get any quotes from Detroit Red Wings insiders from Bromia himself like we did from Dolly Wall for Vancouver, but Detroit kind of has the same thing going on. They have a nice Swedish history as well, guys like Zetterberg, guys like Cronwall, you know the drill, but... The obvious difference between these two teams is the scenarios and the status quos of how these teams are going. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. These teams aren't really going anywhere. Everything's been paused because of that pandemic. Yeah, you know what? Okay, let's just talk about how each of these two teams can benefit from a guy like Bromia and how exactly somebody who is in a free agent position like Bromia is can benefit from these two situations. First off with Vancouver, this team is a playoff team. I genuinely believe that with 110% of my heart. When this team is healthy, when this team has a top six of Miller, Petey, Toffoli, Pearson, Horvat, Besser, this team is a playoff team. When this team has Jacob Markstrom, this team is a playoff team. If you take a look at the status quo of the Vancouver Canucks, they were battling through and through for a playoff spot. They barely missed out on one, but via the points percentage, they would squeak in if the NHL decides to proceed with the playoffs later in the year. But this team is competitive, and this team is in a position where they do indeed have so many forwards at their disposal that for a guy like Bromir who's coming into the NHL and trying to get his first taste of the action, I'm not too sure if Vancouver would be willing to give him the best opportunity to do that. Now, if he wants to play in a middle bottom six role and he's okay with a limited amount of ice time, then great, we'll try it out. But the Detroit Red Wings, on the other hand, are in a position where they're just, they're just terrible. They're really bad. Really, really bad this year. And anybody who's watched the league knows that. So if there's a team that could use a shakeup, could use a new player, could give the opportunities to anybody who asks, it would be Detroit. Because Detroit has nothing to lose. They're not competing for anything this year. They're competing for the first overall pick, and they already secured last place in the league. If Bromia went over to Detroit, they would 110% give much more of an opportunity, probably much more ice time, than Vancouver would. Now obviously, that is indeed somewhat important for a guy who's coming over and trying to decide how he's going to spend his NHL future, but at the same time, the fact is Detroit's bad, Vancouver is good. So if you want to take a look at it from that perspective, if Bromea signed with Detroit, the likelihood is he would spend his prime years in the NHL, wasting away on a bad team. On the other hand, if he goes to Vancouver, there's a chance he gets himself in a playoff run sometime down the line. Now. It really does depend what you take a look at and what you value more. Do you value more the individual ice time, the individual skills, the individual opportunity, and the individual reliance that a team would put upon you? Or do you value playing on a team that's actually good and playing on a team that you can win games with? Even though you might have to sacrifice some of your ice time, some of your deployment, who cares? You're winning games. So it's really a philosophical argument once you get down to that. but. Indeed, Vancouver and Detroit are the two teams that could be involved and who could potentially sign this player. If it were up to me to take a look at Bromia's profile, take a look at his statistical profile in the SHL, take a look at what he accomplished with the Oribro Hockey Club last year, I would probably predict a nice 30-point winger in a full NHL season next year. If everything goes right, I could see him hitting about 30 points, maybe getting 10 goals, 20 assists, something like that does seem somewhat plausible. I definitely don't think he's going to come into the NHL and become another Tim Schaller where he doesn't score anything, or he's going to become a Louis Erickson. I don't see that. Just based off of what we've seen in the SHL, he pushes offense positively for his team relative to when he is off the ice, and all the stats are pointing towards a fairly good hockey player, and as a result, I don't think he's going to come over here and be bad in the league, let's just say. He might need some AHL time, that's for sure, but if he does come into the NHL, I wouldn't be surprised if he just found his stride and he was able to actually contribute positively. Or who knows, he could become the next Anton Rodin and just get completely riddled and 
devoid of opportunity, I guess, but that most likely will not happen. Rodine was probably the exception, not the rule, right? So I hope you enjoyed this video, switch to that shows 99, and bye. <laughs>